This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Just a few days ago, I went holiday shopping at the mall, and at one point I walked by a Vineyard Vine store. The feeling I got walking by that store was near identical to the one I got while watching this new movie, Anyone But You. I feel like that's enough to say, but I'll elaborate anyway. Anyone But You is a new rom-com starring Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell. It seems pretty whatever on the outside, but there are a few reasons why this has been on my radar for a good minute. One, it's a pretty decently sized rom-com with a good cast, something I don't think we've had in a minute. And two, the making of it was a whole thing, a whole mess. There's all this talk over Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney taking it too far, and rumors that they were together, and then Glenn Powell and, and, and his then girlfriend broke up while they were filming, and then she posted something like, know your worth, and on to the next. Pretty, uh, sweaty situation, no? But obviously none of this had anything to do with anything. Powell is just a good actor, and apparently they were on the rocks for a while. The relationship. Clearly, I can't help but eat up bullshit like that, and I was kind of hoping this messiness would seep its way into the film, especially because I like both these actors quite a lot. And I I was so severely let down by this movie that I, I have to talk about it unfortunately. The film tells the story of two people, B and Ben, uh, cra I just noticed the names are so similar, who have a one night stand that ends with a miscommunication that leads to both of them never speaking to each other ever again. Until, by coincidence, they're both invited to the same wedding in Australia, and when both of their exes show up, the two of them pretend to be a couple. If you've watched at least five movies ever in your life, you can probably guess what ends up happening. When it comes to rom-coms, I'm, I'm an easy guy to please. It's a genre that usually wins me over emotionally no matter what, because I'm just that kind of guy. What's crucial to making rom-coms work, though, is the chemistry of the two people at the center of the film. Like, even if I didn't love Tom Hanks and You've Got Mail, he and Meg Ryan complemented each other so well in the actual film that I came away kind of enjoying it. Seeing as though I love both Powell and Sweeney, and seeing as though the relationship was clearly so believable while making the film that it managed to spark a fair rumors, this shouldn't have been an issue. But I didn't believe these two for a second. I think Glenn Powell, as usual, is great. He's one of our hottest guys working in the industry. He shows that off more here than he ever has. He also has some really uh, stellar comedic chops that he shows off here and in Hitman whenever the world gets to see that, and so he really is like the perfect guy for a rom-com. He's honestly just one of those guys that's so perfect looking that it makes me depressed when I <laughs> see myself. Like, I really need to get my life together. It made me want to learn a thing or two, which actually reminds me, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their career. Creative journey. I would say it's the perfect time to join Skillshare with the new year just around the corner. It's that time to make that side hustle of yours come to life. Skillshare really does have everything you need to know to go from passion to paycheck or seed your side hustle. Whether you want to build a subscriber base for your email newsletter, use AI tools to increase your productivity, or open your first Etsy shop, Skillshare can help you get there. Their classes are led by industry professionals who have walked the walk and an active community of members ready to cheer you on. As someone who's really disorganized, I love their notion for YouTube creators class. It's helpful me get organized and manage all my projects in a way that makes a lot more sense. It's been super helpful. All that said, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Let's get back into the video. Okay, so Sydney Sweeney's performance in this. Oh no. Let me get this straight. I like Sydney Sweeney. Uh, nothing against her. I think she is one of the strongest actors in Euphoria, and she really proves herself as a dramatic actor in reality. That movie deserved way more love now that I think about it. She has moments here where she pulls off the comedy, like the airplane scene and the bathroom scene near the beginning. Those are, those are fun and fine. But anything else after that, and every single dramatic beat near the end, feels like such a miss for her. She just doesn't seem to care about the film she's in. She doesn't sell any line. She doesn't actually seem happy in any scene with Powell. It's not the worst performance in the world, but it really doesn't carry as a lead performance to a film so reliant on it. But okay, even if her performance isn't great, the film still has some opportunity to save itself, right? This is, after all, heavily based on Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. How could it really fail? And in that way, no, I don't think the story here is bad, maybe a little predictable, but that's something I expected and wanted in a rom-com. That comes with the territory. I just think it's the way the film decides to tell this story that was really underwhelming. So many of the critical stories beats here are rushed and underdeveloped. The one part that worked for me was the Titanic scene and the way they, spoiler alert, grew closer through that experience. To me, that scene was absurd, sweet, cheesy, and believable. Everything I wanted and expected out of a rom-com. But anytime there was a falling out, I really felt like I was watching a bunch of middle school kids trapped in adult bodies navigating conflict. When you zoom out, the entire film is being carried by a series of miscommunications. That's really all that drives the plot here, which not only makes their central relationship feel 
feel incredibly frustrating as all of the issues they continue to run into could be very easily fixed by the smallest amount of clarification, but these miscommunications are just so not reasonable. And listen, I'm not some dude. I know that the entire appeal of rom-coms is the escapism. They aren't supposed to be believable at all, but I do need something to make me care a little bit, to make me feel like for even a second these insanely hot people will not be okay. And everything feels okay all the time for the characters in this movie. How about the com? How's the com? Com is not great either. There is one bit in here that really got to me. It sort of steals the David Hasselhoff bit from the SpongeBob movie, but I'm man enough to admit it's still pretty funny and made me chuckle. Again, Glenn Powell just has a face you can smile at, and Sidney Sweeney's slapsticky airplane scene again is pretty good. But a good chunk of the comedic stuff here is so flat. It feels like millennial cousin trying to riff with the kids, which is fine, but the lines themselves feel horribly out of place and mistimed. Lines like, two showers in eight hours, go off king, just thrown into the end of conversations. Doesn't feel like something the character would say, the rhythm of the words is clunky, it's the kind of line that'll sound super outdated in like two years. If this were made in 2016, someone would have dabbed ironically or whatever. I don't know, I kind of sound like an old grump here. Perhaps it's just not my sense of humor. I love a long came pop. Holly, so what do I know? I just thought the calm at play here is pretty lazy. At the end of the day though, something a lot of people praise about the film is the fact that it's a return to the beloved rom-com genre. A similar sort of praise that No Hard Feelings got over the summer for being a return to the R-rated comedy. Praise that I felt was properly deserved. But with anyone but you, I just can't really get behind this praise. Trust me, I'm all for bringing beloved genres back to life too. I think the world needs stupid, cheesy, predictable rom-coms. But is this really the best we can do? I'd argue you not at all. I'm not asking for perfection, but I do wish we had something with a bit more bite to it. I do like the fact that we get to look at hot people for a hundred minutes or so. I think the cinematography is fine. There is some absurdity to it that's admirable. The use of the song Unwritten, pretty good. And as for Glenn Powell, let's just cast him in everything forever. But even a lousy rom-com can get me to feel on board at some point. Anyone but you made me feel nothing. And in that way, maybe it succeeded at exactly what it wanted to do. My brain unintentionally turned off while watching it and I kind of just sat back and let it all wash over me. But again, is that the best we can do for rom-coms these days? If so, maybe the genre is better left untouched. So those are my silly little thoughts on the movie. Thanks for watching, go watch anyone but you and form your own opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.